हेलो गाइस आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग गुड आई एम विशाली की कान एंड वी आर डिस्कसिंग द ऑप्टिकल कम्युनिकेशन टुडे इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द ऑप्टिकल आइसोलेटर्स और ऑप्टिकल सर्कुलेटर्स बोथ ऑफ दीज टॉपिक्स वी आर गोइंग टू कवर इन डिटेल इन दिस वीडियो सो लेट्स बी विद मी टिल द एंड ऑफ दिस वीडियो एंड यू विल बी गेटिंग अ लॉट ऑफ न्यू इन्फॉर्मेशन अबाउट द ऑप्टिकल आइसोलेटर्स एंड हाउ वी कैन मेक द ऑप्टिकल सर्कुलेटर्स फ्रॉम द ऑप्टिकल आइसोलेटर्स सो लेट स्टार्ट आर डिस्कशन विद द ऑप्टिकल आइसोलेटर्स सो ऑप्टिकल आइसोलेटर्स आर द टू टर्मिनल एंड द यूनि डायरेक्शनल डिवाइस सो इट इज गोइंग टू ट्रांसमिट द सिग्नल ओनली इन द वन डायरेक्शन एंड दिस इज द ब्यूटी ऑफ द ऑप्टिकल आइसोलेटर्स वी आर गोइंग टू सेंड द सिग्नल ओनली इन द वन डायरेक्शन विद द हेल्प ऑफ आइसोलेटर सो वेन एवर वी डोंट वॉन्ट द रिफ्लेक्शन ऑफ द सिग्नल सो एट दैट सिनेरियो वी कैन यूज द ऑप्टिकल आइसोलेटर्स लाइक विद द सोर्स सो वेन आई हैव अ सोर्स सोर्स इज सेंडिंग द ऑप्टिकल सिग्नल बट वी डोंट वॉन्ट द सिग्नल reflected back towards the source which can damage the source so in this scenario i can use the optical isolator in between the source and the optical fiber so in between source and optical fiber i will be having the isolator which will be sending the signal only in the forward direction but making it reflected back is not possible when the optical isolator is present in between so let's understand how it is going to give me this amazing functionality so now the structure is consistent of the birefringent wedge so first of all we are going to see what is a birefringent wedge what is a faraday rotator and what are their working principles so if we know what is the birefringent wedge what is a faraday rotator then we can understand the working so in the structure we have two birefringent wedge and in between we have the faraday rotator so this is the full structure structure is simple now here if i talk about the birefringent wedge it is made of the calcite crystals so the calcite crystals are having a unique property what is the unique property so they are going to give a very high refractive index for the horizontally polarized signal but if i have the vertically polarized signal they will behave as a least refractive index material so i know light will travel in a faster way when it has the least refractive index and it is going to bend when it is having high refractive index so when the light is going through the birefringent wedge it is going to split so one part of the light which is the horizontal polarized signal it is going to have the higher refractive index and it is going to bend so horizontal polarized signal is going to bend when it pass through the birefringent fiber and now if i have the vertically polarized signal it is going to pass as it is it is going to have the minimum refractive index right so this is the unique property of the birefringent wedge right so i hope now you understood the birefringent wedge in detail now coming to the faraday rotator what is the faraday rotator how it is working so as the name suggests it is a rotator so it is going to rotate the signal with the 45 degree clockwise direction this 45 degree clockwise direction rotation we have set for a particular purpose of making the optical isolator right so this rotation depends upon the magnetic field density and the length of the optical fiber and the material also so if i have the faraday rotator i can change the rotation angle if i change the magnetic field density if i change the length of the rotator i can easily change the angle by which it is going to rotate also i can change the direction in which it is going to rotate so i hope you understood both of them so now coming to the working how it is working so now here we have the birefringent wedge the birefringent wedge the source is going to send the signal now the source is having the signal which will be having the vertically polarized signal as well as the horizontally polarized signal now when this signal passes through the birefringent wedge so the vertically polarized signal is going to achieve the least refractive index and it is going in the straight manner only so the vertical signal is going traveling in the straight direction only whereas this horizontal signal is having a longer path it is going to bend because it is going to have a higher refractive index in the birefringent wedge right so you must know why they are splitting why the horizontal polarized signal and the vertical polarized signal are splitting right so they are splitting because these are achieving the different refractive index from the birefringent wedge so now this signal has splitted 
now they will move out right so signal will move out and now they will reach to the faraday rotator so faraday rotator is having these two signals which are called the ordinary signal or the extraordinary signal the ordinary signal is traveling in the straight direction the extraordinary signal has moved down right so now here we can see as soon this signal reaches to the faraday rotator so now when it reaches the faraday rotator they are going to get the 45 degree clockwise rotation we have set it with the magnetic field intensity with the length of the faraday rotator so these signals are going to rotate the vertical signal is having now the 45 degree rotation from the upward direction so here this was the vertical signal it is going to move in the clockwise direction in the 45 degree and the extraordinary signal the extraordinary signal was horizontal so this horizontal signal is again going to move in the horizontal direction only in the 45 degree so now here we will be having 45 degree clockwise rotation so if i am rotated by 45 degree from here it will be rotating like this so now we have the 45 degree rotation now the signal again reach to the birefringent wedge now when they reach the birefringent wedge so here this is 45 degree tilted this is also 45 degree tilted so neither of them is vertical so, so both of them are going to get a uh, same refractive index and they are going to merge and produce the output right so now coming to the reverse operation if i have the output and the reflected wave if it try to moves out will it move out from the working of the isolator i told you that forward movement is possible but the reverse movement was not so this ray can travel in the forward direction we have understood it but will it travel in the backward direction so you can see this is the wave now here we have the two components again the birefringent wedge is going to give the higher path to the horizontal component so this horizontal component is traveling with the longer path because it is going to have the higher refractive index then it will be reaching to the faraday rotator where they will again be rotating now here after rotating what will happen they will again reach the birefringent wedge now when they reach the birefringent wedge they will rotate in the opposite direction right so they are not going to merge and we will not be able to achieve the final producted output so they are not going to combine and we are not going to get the final output so this was the working of the optical isolator so now coming to the optical circulator we can connect various optical isolators to make the optical circulator what is the optical circulator we can provide one out input and we will be getting the output from the one direction only so here we will be having multiple terminals but it is giving me the output only in the another terminal only so the terminal which is next to it it will be giving output only in this terminal so if i supply input as p1 i will be getting output at p2 but i will not be getting output at p3 but if i supply at p2 i will be getting output at p3 but i will not be getting output at p1 if i give supply to p3 i will be getting output at p1 but i will not be getting output at p2 so now this is how we can have the bidirectional operation as well we can connect the multiple isolators and we can make the circulator if i want to make the 4 cross 4 3 cross 3 circulator we can easily make it but more than that i don't want to make because the isolators are having a big circuitry if i have to make a various uh, type of ports inside the circulator if i want to make 5 cross 5 circulator then it would be very difficult for me to make because the circuitry would be very high so this is the 3 cross 3 circuitry that i have shown you here and we will be seeing its functioning now in this video so this is a 3 cross 3 circuitry which is having the birefringent wedge i hope now you remember what is the birefringent wedge now after that we have a half wave plate the half wave plate is going to give the rotation in one direction for the upward signal and rotation in the opposite direction for the downward signal so now birefringent wedge after that the half wave plate after that the faraday rotator faraday rotator we know it is going to give me the rotation only in the one direction so here we have set it to minus 45 so here the it will giving me 
एंटी क्लॉक वाइज डायरेक्शन रोटेशन देन वी हैव द बाय रिफ्रिंजेंट वेज अगेन राइट सो इट मीन्स दैट इट इज गिविंग द लीस्ट पाथ फॉर द हॉरिजोंटल रेडिएशन नाउ अगेन वी हैव द फेराडे रोटेटर विद द एंटी क्लॉक वाइज रोटेशन देन वी हैव द हाफ वेव प्लेट विद द एंटी क्लॉक वाइज इन द अपसाइड एंड क्लॉक वाइज इन द डाउनवर्ड देन वी हैव द बाय रिफ्रिंजेंट वेज अगेन सो दिस इज द सर्किट विच शोज वी हैव द थ्री पोर्ट पी टू पी वन एंड हेयर वी विल बी हैविंग द पोर्ट थ्री so in the in between port 1 and port 2 and port 3 we will be having these many structures you can imagine if i want to make the 5 cross 5 or 4 cross 4 structure how many parts would be there for the circuitry right so we try to make our circuit 4 cross 4 or 3 cross 3 only after that we don't want to make the circulator for a big circuitry so now here you can see what happens we have at the input of the birefringent wave let's suppose we are supplying the input at p2 so input will be having both horizontal and the vertical waves so now here it is going to give the lower refractive index to the vertical signal and it is going to give the higher refractive index to the horizontal signal i have denoted it with this sign so vertical signal means lower refractive index it is going to pass the vertical signal as it is so vertical signal was passed as it is and the horizontal signal traveled with the longer distance and this is how the vertical signal traveled so here we will be having the horizontal signal so now here at the half wave plate at the upside we will be having the vertical signal and at the downside we will be having the horizontal signal half wave plate is going to give the rotation in the clockwise direction for the upside signal so this signal will be having 45 degree clockwise rotation so it will be rotating like this and it is also going to give the anti clockwise rotation so here it is going to have it has rotated like this so now in the faraday rotator again we have minus 45 degree rotation so now this will be converting into this signal and here this signal will be converting into this signal only so now we are getting the vertical signals now again we have the birefringent fibers with the least refractive index for the horizontal signal now here we have the vertical signal so both signals are going to travel with the longer path and here we are getting the signals as it is right because both signals are getting the same refractive index from the birefringent fiber so we are drawing the signals as it is again we have the faraday rotator which is going to rotate both of the signals in one direction only in the anti clockwise direction i have rotated both of the signals then we have the half wave plate so half wave plate is going to have the anti clockwise rotation for the upside signal so this signal is going to rotate anti clockwise and this signal is going to rotate clockwise so this signal will become horizontal and this signal will become vertical now with the birefringent fiber the vertical signal is having least reflection so this signal will pass as it is but the horizontal signal will travel a longer path and here i will be generating the output at p3 both of the extraordinary and the ordinary component of the signal will combine and we will be generating the output p3 so we have understood that when we supplied the signal to p2 we are getting the output to p3 so this is working in this direction when we supplied the input to p2 we are getting p3 but we are not getting any output at p1 right because at the p1 you can see we had splitted the signal right so at p1 we were not getting any output so now let's understand what happens if i supply the input at p3 so when i supply the input at p3 so here at the birefringent wedge we have the input so here we have the input so here we know it's a vertical birefringent wedge so here it is going to get the higher refractive index to the horizontal wave so horizontal wave will be moving like this and the vertical wave will be moving in the straight manner so this is how the horizontal wave is going to travel a longer path and here at the input we will be having the horizontal wave and we will be having a vertical wave so this signal is passed here at the input so now in the half wave plate the upper signal will be rotated in the anti clockwise direction it will be like this and the lower signal will be rotated like this now here at the faraday rotator we will be ha having the input like this so now this is the input so now here we are going to get the anti clockwise shift to both of them so this is going to turn like this this is going to turn like this now here the birefringent wedge 
the input is like this so now here it is going to give the combined input because here this will be traveling like this and because the vertical will be getting the high refractive index it is going to travel like this so again they have both combined in the faraday rotator they are both going to get the 45 degree shift in the anti clockwise direction so it will be like this the output would be like this so now here in the upper half plate we have the output like this again because it is going to rotate the output will be like this so here you can see the output will be generated like this at the input p1 only so now here because we had supplied the input at p3 we are generating the output at p1 there would be no output at p2 so this is how we can summarize the working of circulator as well so i hope now you understood the isolator its functioning and you have also understood the circulator and its functioning so if you have still any kind of doubt you can put the doubt in the comment now and i will be trying to resolve your doubt as soon as possible i hope you like this session if you like it please push the like button subscribe to the channel share it with your friends and also give me your valuable feedback thank you so much